everybody. So tonight we're going to go ahead and make our uh, Neapolitan pizzas and I'm at home this time so I have my fun little KitchenAid mixer and we've got our baking stones in the oven so we'll get to make it kind of for real. We don't have a wood fire but you know the gas will do. So what I'm going to do first here is make up the dough and we need to sit for a few hours before we get to make our pizza. So we've got four cups of flour here. Dump that in the bowl first just because it's hard to get it in there once we have the bowl mounted on here. And then, we've got about a half teaspoon of salt and about two tablespoons of yeast. And then, I uh, was actually only going to make do three cups of flour, but I decided to do four. In case my kid's friend shows up later. So, we have enough to make an extra pizza or else we'll just make our pizzas a little bigger. And we'll have more left over for tomorrow. So, <clears throat> with this machine basically I'm just going to kick on the motor for a second to mix in our yeast and salt. Get everything kind of combined together. I've got about a cup and a half of uh, cold water here. And I was told that I'm supposed to explain why We'll use cold water versus like warm or whatever. Um, first of all, yeast is only active from like around 90 degrees up to about 120 ish when it dies, or you'll kill it off if it gets over that temperature. So I want it to sit for a while and have time to, uh, I don't know, get its flavor together before it starts rising because I want yeast to still be active later when I am baking it, but I also want the dough to be able to sit long enough to do its thing. So, I'm uh, going to start this, and I know it'll get noisy. Well, I've also got my other camera here, so you can see down in the bowl afterwards here. So, I'm going to dump my water in with the motor running. Now you can see, it's still got a lot of uh, loose flour, and while I was pouring the water and I had the motor running, that way I don't get it all up the sides of the bowl, and because otherwise the flour will get all stuck to the edges, kind of see if there's any, there's a little bit stuck to the edge right there, you can see it. I'm just thinking it's really stuck to the camera on this thing. <laughs> Chew it right up. So, and then I'm going to keep shooting this though until it uh, gets completely combined just so you can see. Because right now it hardly looks like it's going to combine, but it will if we let it keep going. So, now I'm going to let it sit for about 5 minutes and then I'll knead it again for about 10 minutes. Basically this uh, period in here when it's all mixed up but it's not being kneaded is a time where it autolyzes it, it uh, gets all the little bits of flour wet while it's waiting. So that's why a lot of times recipes will say to let your dough rest for five minutes or whatever. It's basically it gives it a chance to get um, get all the flour wet. So we'll let it sit for a bit. Okay so it sat for about five minutes here. So I'm going to go ahead and try, not try, I'm going to go ahead and run it for about 10 minutes to really work up the elastin in the dough and that'll make the pizza chewier so it'll hold together better and you won't have like a ball apart kind of crust. So anyway, I'm going to run this and I'll uh, be back with you in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and 
pull it out of the mixer and throw a little olive oil on it and cover it up to throw it in the oven to, to let it rise for a couple hours. Alright, so now that our dough is kneaded, I'm going to go ahead and drop the bowl down and kind of work it off the, uh, off the dough hook. So we take it off here, and now you can see we've got our dough. It is still a little sticky, but that's fine. That's how we want our pizza dough to be. Um, huh. Things moved on me. We put a little bit of olive oil in here. Probably about half a tablespoon. Just enough to loop the sides of the bowl down. Um, keep the dough from sticking too badly. Just kind of work it around. Um, if you can see it here, just kind of work it around. And then flip it over one last time so that the dough is lubed all the way around. It'll puff up and you know kind of meet the sides of the bowl and you don't want it to stick on the bowl. So that's the only reason for the oil. It doesn't do anything else. Um, and if you forget it, well, it'll still work. And then, I take a towel, throw it over here, and then we've got these, uh, now we've got these pizza stones, which I like to just drop them on top of here. It seals the bowl up and keeps the moisture from getting out. So, there's that. We set it in the oven. Um, our oven does have a bread proof setting, which basically runs it at 100 degrees, which is perfect for the yeast. But what I'm going to do is let it sit in here for about an hour and a half first, and then I'll turn the, the bread proof thing on to 100 degrees for about a half hour at the end. If your oven doesn't have that, what you can do is kind of just take it up, take the dough out, kick it up to 200 degrees, let it go for a little bit until it gets warm inside there, probably, I don't know your oven, so. But try to get it up around 100 degrees, 120 degrees. Then you can set the bowl back in there. The only reason I say to take the bowl out is I've done this before and forgotten the bowl in there, and all of a sudden you have this completely worthless wad of like half-cooked dough. So, <laughs> if you don't want to take it out, you don't have to, but I would. So. Then basically after that, we'll be taking it out, breaking it up in balls, and pressing it out, making our pizzas. Um, so I'll be back to show you the sauce, and uh, then we'll be back to do the, do the final pizzas. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so our dough is ready, and now I'm gonna go ahead and make up some sauce. Basically we got a can of uh, organic tomato paste here. that up real quick. This is really a cool, it's a uh, can opener. It's an um, Ozo, Oxo, whatever it is. Oxo. Um, it cuts around the edge of the thing, so I don't know, it was like 20 bucks. Um, but it, it's a lot more sturdy than the little $2 ones that you get at the Walmart or whatever. So, put this in here. Um, and then, all we need is a can of water here. Just to get started, it's easier to start with a small amount of water and get it stirred in and then just add water to that. Because if you put too much water in it, it's hard to, hard to get it to mix in. So it's easier to do a few, a few steps. And then, I have some dry herbs here, they're just, it's a uh, Italian mix kind of stuff. So it's got uh, oregano, basil, thyme, um, not sure if there's anything else. 
but it's just a pre-mixed, you know, um, it's from a company called, I'm not sure if it's Tony's or Tones or what is, T-O-N-E is the, is the company's name, um, but I'm sure any company's got the, uh, a mix that says Italian seasoning on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more water to this, just to bring it up to the top. Basically, I'm gonna end up with two cups total of, uh, of sauce between the, uh, so six ounces of this and basically um, 10 ounces of water, I guess. So about one and a quarter cups of water. So we have that. And then, I don't put any salt in the sauce anymore. I used to, but um, found that it really is not that noticeable. And if you like a little bit of salt, um, you know, after you mix it up, put it on, bake the pizza, you just sprinkle a little bit of salt on top, and then you can use almost none, and it'll make it very noticeable. Whereas if you put it in the sauce, you're gonna need like a teaspoon of it to get the same as a tiny little pinch on top of the pizza. So, just a way to cut the salt back without missing out on the salt flavor if you like that. Um, I know I used to do that, or, you know, in between, I, I used to put it in the sauce and then sprinkle it on top as well. Then I just started sprinkling it on top and not putting it in the sauce and now I don't even really notice it not being there. Um, so it's just a matter of what you get used to. Alright, so we're ready with our dough here. That's what it looks like. When it comes out, it's, uh, it's stuck to the sides a little bit, but if you just kind of rub your hands down the sides, you can peel it away. Um, once you get it kind of started, you can peel away big chunks at a time. And just kind of gather it up into a ball again. So there, now we have our ball dough. Half. And break it in half again. We have our four dough balls. So I'm going to take two of them here. So I got my two good dough balls. Just kind of drop them in the flour and press them down, flip them around a few times just to get them to get the uh, feel started. Now, I wish I could say that I can take them and, you know, spin them and do all that happy stuff, but no. <laughs> can't, quite, can't quite do that. Um, dough is certainly capable, I'm just not. So, some people like to just press them out. I like to get it a bit thinner. So, and take a rolling pin. Really like these rolling pins better without the handles on the end. It's just a, no, they refer to it as a French rolling pin, but whatever. Um, toppings. Alright, so I've got all my toppings here. We've got some cherry tomatoes cut in half, black olives, green olives, some red onions. We've got our sauce that we just made. And then I've got a pouch of potatoes that I cut up. I just made into little slices and I, and I cooked them for about a half hour in, in the oven at 350. And we got some spinach. 
So what I'm gonna do is slop some of the sauce on here. Okay, so I've got potatoes down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these cherry tomatoes on here. So now we've got our toppings on our pizza. I'm gonna try to hold this up so you can see a little better without dumping it on the floor. So there's our pizza. All right, hi! So this is gonna be a little bit of a weird camera angle, but it lets you see into the oven. That way you can see me shake the pizza into there off the peel. All right, so here's our pizza. And take this olive oil and just kinda Give it a little over top of it. Now, because this peel is covered with flour, I'll be able to, uh, I can shake it and the pizza, I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of slides around on there. So, open up the oven, give it a little shake, and I can get it right off there. So now it's on the, on the pizza stone and off my peel. And now, I'm going to take Lisa's, same deal, a little olive oil over top of it, and like this, I'm going to do, do the shake first over the sink here so I'm not dumping the flour all over the floor. Okay, now, got my oh. hmm. one of the... Uh, the spinach flew off the edge. All right, so now both of our pizzas are in the oven. Only need to set it for about seven minutes. And there we go. So now they're gonna cook in here and I will show it to you guys as soon as it's done. Bye. Okay, for those of you that are observant, um, you're gonna notice that the pizza changed. The reason is I was using my other camera and I didn't have it focused when I went to take the pizza out the first time. So now we're doing our second set of pizzas. So that's what it looks like coming out of the oven. And we'll have a picture of it on a plate. I'm doing pretty good here with holding the camera and everything. Yay. All right, cool. Well, I will see you guys in a bit.